Will everybody stand and face the flag, please? Hello, Mr. Crone. Prayer first. Father God, we uh, bow before you humbly. We ask that uh, you bless and use each member on uh, the city board. Father, uh, we lift up the hurting hearts that are in our nation right now. We ask that uh, if anything good can come from this uh, turmoil, that uh, you would uh, show us uh, your will and your way through it. We ask all these things in the powerful name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's face the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it comes, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to call this up, mean to order. Uh, Miss City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Mayor McClendon. Present. City Attorney Stevenson. Here. City Treasurer Martin. City Accountant Tory Perry. Here. Councilor Catt. Here. Councilor Croom. Here. Councilor Harris. Councilor Halt. Here. Councilor Hutchinson. Here. Thank you, ma'am. Councilor Mohammed. Present. Councilor Monday. Here. Councilor Murray. Here. Councilor Pulliam. Here. Councilor Wheelis. Here. I think the carriage is on. I don't know if the mic is muted or not, but I think she's on. Well, we have a nine out of 10 present. If Ms. Harris can uh, come through, I definitely include her to the meeting. Uh, are there any corrections to the minutes? I get a second. Second. All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed. The minutes. Of the minutes. All right. Yes, sir. Miss City Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Councilor Cat. Yes. Councilor Croom. Abstain. Councilor Harris. Councilor Holt. Yes. Councilor Hutchinson. Yes. Councilor Mohammed. Yes. Councilor Monday. Yes. Councilor Murray. Yes. Councilor Pulliam. Yes. Councilor Wheelis. Yes. When well, the minutes are approved, uh, we're going to go to old business. Uh, Mr. City Attorney. The second reading of an ordinance granting a special use permit for 1701 North 7th, permitting a trucking related business in a C2 open display district. With the permission of the council, I'm going to ask can we suspend the rules and place it on the third reading? I make a motion. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. No. Call the roll. Yes, sir. Councilor Cat. No. Councilor Croom. Yes. Councilor Harris. Councilor Holt. No. Councilor Hutchinson. Yes. Councilor Mohammed. Yes. Councilor Monday. Yes. Councilor Murray. Yes. Councilor Pulliam. Yes. Councilor Wheelis. Yes. It passes. Mr. City Attorney, will you read it for this third time? An ordinance granting a special use permit for 1701 North 7th, permitting a trucking related business in a C2 open display district. Having to hear it for the third time, are there any discussions? Uh, may I ask procedurally, do you get a motion and a second first before we can have a discussion? Moved. Well, yeah. first, right, let you me need a motion and a second before you have a discussion. All right, let me get a motion and a second to approve the. So moved. Second. All right. In the discussion, please. This business has been approved by planning. Uh, it's gone through all the appropriate agencies it needs to. The only problem I have with reading this out three times and approving it today is we still don't have the information from RDOT, the 
the traffic congestion that this possibly could cause would have an adverse effect on Cracker Barrel trying to come off the off ramp to even get to their facility. And I can't see automatically approving this ordinance and this business use until we get something back from RDOT telling us how it's going to affect another business. And I just would like for the council to give it another two weeks until we can get that report from them. It may have no effect, but I'd like to know for sure before we approve it. I, I do agree with uh, Councillor Cat on that. You're talking about North 7th Street. How far down on North 7th? Are you talking near the railroad track or where? It's just going to be located. Now, as soon as you, and I'm, I'm sure Mr. Luker is here, but as soon as you pass, uh, you come off the off ramp right there at Cracker Barrel, you go underneath the overpass, the business right. will be located on your right. Okay, and again, there may be enough distance there. I think it's going to be north of uh, True Value yes. in that vacant lot. Yep, where all that concrete is now. Uh, and that's what has been there in the past. But Now, this is saying here that it's a trucking-related business. What exactly does that mean, trucking-related? Well, again, Paul can come up. QT is a national firm. They have multiple locations throughout the country, and it's a fantastic company. They do a great job for their employees. I'm first to agree with that. The only concern I had was I can't see sacrificing one for another. But then before we had our final vote, I would just love to have seen the report from RDOT. Paul may have it, I'm not for sure, but I don't think it's come in yet. And I just hate to approve something when it adversely affects another business who has been with us for quite some time. Uh, we have also have a representative from QT here. If you I'm are. looking here at the diagram. It's a beautiful facility. Yes, How many yes. people will that employ? Well, we have a representative here, Ms. Muhammad. Let me bring him up and Paul as well. Oh, sure. Thank you so much. Touch the microphone. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Council. My name is Daniel Chambers, and I work for Quick Trip Corporation, and I office out of 4705 South 129th East Avenue, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, what uh, Council Member Cat was alluding to is there's potential, there was some concern that we had with the Planning Commission with Paul um, talk, uh, talking about any backup on the frontage road of trucks being able to get into our facility without causing any backup on the frontage road. Um, what I was able to submit to um, Paul today is we were able to um, corporately, we agreed to move the drive all the way east as we discussed in the Planning Commission meeting. And um, we have to go get that approved through RDOT. Um, and I guess to kind of eliminate possibly some of your concerns is, is if RDOT doesn't agree to it, we don't get that drive. So they do have to agree to that drive moving or we don't get it. So we are comfortable as a company moving forward at, at our risk of potentially not getting that drive if you guys are willing to approve it tonight. And, and, and Tracy, I just remember we did talk about that. And that is that was concerning, and I agree with you saying that because it just came back to my memories. We talked about it earlier in the meeting. So again, I mean, that's what we had agreed that we was going to wait on for them to come back to their report. I mean, I, I love the the submission they have. I think it's a fantastic company. You know, I'm not in the transportation business, but I, I would never want to do anything that would adversely affect your business by putting something there that would cause a problem. I just wanted to make sure, uh, and I know you say we can go ahead and approve it today and we can wait two weeks or a week for RDOT, but it doesn't affect you getting any, you're not going to start construction this week. You're still going to work on your drawings. You moved it to the east side. Um, I mean, I would just love to wait till we get the report, but I'm going to honor the wishes of the council. And we just we just ask that you well, guys move forward. May I, may I speak? Hold on, hold on, Councilman. The uh, gentleman is speaking, then I go to you next. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we just ask that you guys keep moving this forward. We have contractual contractual obligations that we need to meet, and so we're just trying to meet those and eliminate um, uh, reasons that we can possibly waive on the site. So just working with the sellers and through the kind of the challenging times, just trying to get all these things met so that we can make sure that we fulfill our contractual obligations. Well, what I'd like to do is hear from uh, Philip and uh, Paul because I talked to them a little earlier and they didn't seem to have a whole lot of problem with it. I, for one, want business to come in. I don't think it'd be that big of a deal because we have Walmart down there with fuel station. We have Kroger's with fuel station. We have, we have business in that area. And I feel like 
it, what you're setting up would, would have would be a, a in and out where you would not be affecting Cracker Barrel's business and other would, you know, the, the tractor supply. I, I'm, 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 I'm just ready to see things change. About how many employee employees will it have? 30, 30 employees, 10 management positions, and 20 clerk positions is what we're anticipating for this facility. Are any of those people coming in from other companies or will all those come from this general location, geographical area? Are you bringing any employees with you or will we hire from this geographical area that we, we are in? Um, we are planning to hire most of them from the geographical area. There is possibly, potentially, some of them, um, our employees might want to move here and relocate here, and um, right. that would be that would be an option for them too. So we do let employees relocate if they want to move into Memphis. Area. Right, right. Well, I think it's a beautiful opportunity for the city of West Memphis. I'm just concerned, as far as Mr. Cat has said uh, about the, the traffic, and of course, we're going to get our dot opinion. I, I have no problem with it, other than that. I'm good. I'm good to go. Well, I, I personally, I think that uh, even if the if we approve it today, they could continue on with their negotiations and get their plan. Right, right. right. But, but if RDOT comes back and says you got to do it this way, I'm sure that this company would be very willing to change their plans to adapt to RDOT. They so would have to. I don't have I a do problem agree with that. Just going ahead and approving this today. Mm -hmm. I, if I may, uh, I learned a long time ago not to make predictions and definitely not speak for another company. Uh, you know, RDOT may turn around and say, bring a different drive in on the west side of Cracker Barrel, circle it around to 7th Street, and that would just be completely cost prohibitive. So, uh, you know, again, I, I truly want the business. I, I truly want you here. I just wanted some assurance that it wouldn't affect another existing business. Sure. So, I have one question. I'm sorry. I, I do want to know. Uh, Council Cat, your concern, how long have you all been discussing uh, this, your concern? I think this is the first time collectively we've heard about your concern. I know you've been talking with Planning Commission with Paul. No, uh, no. I apologize. I'm sorry. Now, my first uh, venture with this was Thursday of last week, okay. the DRC meeting. Uh, okay. No. So since last week, this, this has been a concern. The only reason why I wanted to know, I wanted to make sure I wasn't slipping, and I wanted to make sure certain that, you know, is, is this the first time your concern has been brought to us so that we can kind yes. of, okay, all right. All right. <coughs> Go ahead, sir. Just, just another consideration on it. We did put a lot of thought into how we did lay out the interior of the truck court to try to minimize any potential stacking. Um, that is why we do have have the um, fueling stations oriented the way that we do so that we can try to get the trucks in and get them out so that they are not stacking up on 7th Street so it not excuse me on the frontage road so it doesn't it doesn't become an issue so just I wanted you guys to let you know that too again I, I look forward to that location and, and you being in West Memphis investing your money I just wanted something you know something from Mardot showing that this is no way gonna affect an existing established business sure we appreciate your concerns and bringing it up and the frank discussion Thank about you. it. If here no other discussion, it's time to, time for a vote. So, uh, Ms. City Clerk, will you call will you, you call the roll? Yes, sir. Councilor Cat. Yes. Councilor Crum. Yes. But what? Yep. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. What are we? What are we voting on right now? To you voting to approve? Reading? You are, you voting to approve granting special use permit for seventeen oh seven? Okay. Yes. This will be the third reading. Yes, this final reading. Okay. Yes. As it says, the second reading on the agenda. Well, yeah, we just right. two times. Yeah. Just a little mistake, no problem. No, we it was just no. I actually asked you all to suspend the rules, and and you all gave me a motion to second to place it on the third reading. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I was lost. I didn't hear that. I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead, Miss Patricia. Okay. Uh, Councillor Harris? Yes. Hello. <laughs> Councillor Holt? Yes. Councillor Hutchinson? Yes. Councillor Mohammed? Yes. Councillor Monday? Yes. Councillor Murray? Yes. Councillor Pulliam? Yes. Councilor Wheelis. Yes. The motion. Uh, yes. 
Yes, it passes. Thank you all, and welcome to West Memphis. Thank you very much. All right, can, can I get a uh, number, an ordinance number for that? Let me see that ordinance point. number will be 2550. 2550. All right, I have a third reading. Let's see the attorney. All right. Third reading of an ordinance granting a special use permit for. 1510 East Broadway, permitting an automotive dealer used in a C2 open display district. Here in the red for his third time, can I get a motion and a second to approve? So, so moved. All right, any discussion? If I may. Uh, what has changed from our conversation six months ago uh, concerning the opening? We had a you know prohibition for a while. Um, I mean, what happened in planning? What happened with our zoning? Uh, what did I miss? <clears throat> well, I mean, I don't want to speak for Paul or the planning department, but there was a procedure passed for the special use permitting situation, and. A I haven't gone to these meetings, but I assume they've gone through it properly, the process, and here we are. This is in Ward. This, well, this is in Ward. For it be on Ward Four side. Right. This, but I guess one of the issues that came up was so many car lots on Broadway on the east end of town, yeah. and they was not looking desirable. And the council wanted to do something to make sure that they put something in place to make sure if you're going to have a car lot, you're going to keep it up to par. Or both the council members in the ward okay i mean have they indicated they're in favor of moving forward with this Mr. Just since i'm always first on the boat yeah. i kind of like know their feelings so <laughs> well one thing i can say about this of course like i say i talked to paul this morning me and him actually been keeping our eyes peeled on it for quite some time and you know they've had cars already on the lot you know that was inoperable and things you know, of that nature and, and and here the whole thing is from 14th Street back to 16th Street, you know, I think code enforcement needs to really look at that because, you know, you just need to look at that. And when you ride down through there, and I know everybody talks about what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. And once they get the license and everything, it goes back to, uh, uh, it, well, just go down and take a look and you'll see. I, I don't have to tell you. Just go down there and take a look and see. And these are all the things that we have approved. And a lot of this has happened since we opened it back up, and we constantly approving and approving and approving. Like I told you all this morning, I'm fine. I don't have a problem with it, but I just think that that, that, that the codes need to start being enforced. That I know that. For. Just go down there and take a look. I, you know, I challenge all of you to go down and take a look. You know, Mr. Rick, you're there as well. The paper. Go down and just take a look from 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 15th Street. No, 16th Street. Street. That's a Broadway. All 16th way Street. They just say all the way to 16th to 17th Street. Just go there and take a look. Okay. Now, uh, is there any other discussion? We're talking about 16th Street, first block. It is bad. Uh, we need to go down there and do something about it. But this is on 15th Street on the north side. <laughs> it's, it's on the north side. Clean. I strongly agree. It's clean. I strongly agree. But the only thing that I'm saying is, if you ever notice, red cars been sitting over there. Because I took pictures of them. Been, they've been over there ever since they've been trying to get this approved. Uh, you know, in our cool cars. But that's fine. I mean, you know, if, if you want to go approve, go down and approve it. And, you know, and I, I just think that, you know, code enforcement needs to do something about it. Okay, let me, let me add... Um, uh, it'll be a clean slate for the, the new owners, hopefully, if you grant them a special use permit. I just want them to understand how hard we are working to reevaluate the uh, east end of town with the new fire station, with the new schools coming down there, tearing the apartment complexes coming down there. So giving you all this special use permit, we ain't expecting it to come up and look like it's been looking for the last couple of years. How we are used cold enforcement to make sure and demand that that lot be what it needs to be. So when you see them, if you're out of compliance, don't say I'm sending them down. I'm already letting you know from the top. We gon' rebuild and revitalize the east end of town. So get out, get it out your mind that it's gonna be like it used to be. It's a new day. So whatever the council sees for that point, we'll move forward. And Mayor, I feel like these people are gonna keep it up, gonna keep it nice. And if it wasn't, I wouldn't 
you know, if you know anything about me, I wouldn't put myself out there saying this if I didn't think so. They, they want to be in this, let them open the business. And if they don't apply, what? we know what well, the police in court and for them out there. I support the ordinance, I'm fine. I mean, I don't think I'm saying is, I'm, you know, I'm not, I support the ordinance, but, you know, we've had this numerous of times where, you know, people coming in asking us to do something, and yet still, they already violating before they even get started. So, I mean, I, I mean, I support the ordinance, I don't have a problem with it. Like you said, give them a clean slate. I mean, you know, maybe they might do right. I don't know. You know, but so far I'm just saying, you know, I'm just tired of with us approving things when people trying to get something approved and at the same time, you know, you see nothing but, you know, red cars here and there. Hearing no other, is there any other further discussion? If hearing none, I'm going to ask uh, the city clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Councilor Cat. Yes. Councilor Croom. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Holt. Yes. Councilor Hutchinson. Yes. Councilor Muhammad. Yes. Councilor Monday. Yes. Councilor Murray. Yes. Councilor Pulliam. Yes. Councilor Wheelis. Yes. 10 out of 10. It passes. Uh, congratulations. And uh, will you get that ordinance and number, please, Ms. Senator Clerk? Yes, sir. That ordinance number will be 2551. 2551. All right. City, City Attorney, we got a third reading. Oh, First of all, did we come over the census zone? Because if you're going to table it, it would be it won't be no discussion. May I make a motion? We table it. Actually, definitely until we get a census to get it down. Yeah, we'll take it down. Yeah, we'll we'll take it down. Yeah, 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 an ordinance establishing the net metering regulations of the City of West Memphis, Arkansas, and the West Memphis Utility Commission declaring an emergency and for other purposes. May I get a motion and a second to approve? So moved. So moved. All right. Any discussion? It's open on the floor. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm all for reading it out for you now, but I'm just not for the first time. Okay. All right. Hearing the uh, uh, discussion, uh, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Now I'm going to need a motion and second to approve the emergency clause. Section. Do you want to do it? the session? Section four. Section four. If you all want to put place on the emergency clause or you don't. So I'm going to get a motion and second to approve section so four. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Who was the first? No. Oh. Councilman Pulliam, did you say oppose? Uh, I oppose. Okay, Re uh, call the uh, roll. Yes, sir. Councilor Cat? Yes. Councilor Croom? Yes. Councilor Harris? Councilor Harris? Yes.
Councillor Mohammed? Yes. Councillor Monday? Yes. Councillor Murray? Yes. Councillor Pulliam? No. Thank you, sir. Councillor Willis? Yes. It passes uh, the emergency clause. So, Ms. City Clerk, would you get 01 uh, ordinance number, please? Yes, that will be uh, ordinance number 2552. That number is 2552. Permission request. I need permission to sign it. So move. Oh, oh. Second. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Hold on. I, I have a ready. Everybody's ready to jump on that one. Yeah. We're ready. We're trying to save you some air. Okay, okay. That's right. Well, we already got the motion in a second, but let me just do the, the title for the record. Permission authorizing me to submit a sealed bid to the county for land as described in the county's recently advertised notice of sale. If the city is the successful bidder, the bid will be brought back to the council for approval on the bid amount. Payment to the county will be dispensed from the escrow at closing of the sale of the Friday Grand Railroad, pursuant to the purchase and sale agreement with the West Memphis Base Railroad, such sale agreement being approved by City Council on March 19, 2020. I got, who was those two that made the motion? So moved. Second. Second. In discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, bye. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, thank you all for giving me that permission. Next on the list is uh, committee reports. I know police, public works, and budget met. Well, uh, no, sir, but police has. Okay. Yes, uh, we met on yesterday afternoon. Uh, we'll report out next uh, council meeting. Okay. Uh, if I may add, add to the report, uh, the commission. Of course, it's approved, basically approved for the police yeah, department. And I'm not most positive that we're going to see it. We had already budgeted five cars for 2020. Of course, it's not been ordered yet. It will take at least 90 to 120 days before they come in. Uh, so you're looking at 283,150. They had one additional car that they already have, but has to be re-equipped, which is approximately 16,198.84. And then they received a grant for approximately 55,000. Uh, and this 5,245.12 is part of that grant. So there's really not any additional expenses for two cars, I believe for the detectives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, commission approved them, just simply wanted to go ahead and present it to the council. Hopefully they would go ahead and grant the, the permission to move forward. And if they have any questions about fund balances, I will turn that over to Tori. Are you putting that in the motion form? Yes, sir, I am. Make it a second. Second. All right, any discussion about the purchase of the vehicles? Anything to Tori? Hearing none, all in favor, bye. Aye. Aye. Opposed? You purchase the cars, it passes. Does that conclude the police report? That approves their request to bring before the council. As chairman indicated, uh, I have not typed the minutes yet, but I will have them to him shortly. Okay. Uh, public Works, Ms. Mahomet. Yes, Public Works, I met Tuesday of this week, basically a reconnecting meeting. There was a lot of discussion regarding the trash and garbage pickups. I mean, basically that discussion dominated the entire meeting. And of course the mayor was there and he and the department heads uh, are going to get together to discuss some kind of a definitive plan as far as how we're going to pick up, the days we're going to pick up to help keep <coughs> our clean as it should be. So once we get those, once we meet with the department heads, uh, the city engineer, Ms. Amanda Hicks, and others, other council members, and come together uh, and get a definitive plan, we will go forward from there because one of the main things that we are having are a lot of issues with trucks being broken down, the COVID-19 people being off work, and uh, people are just complaining, but we just want our citizens to know that we are working as diligently as we possibly can to try to get our city clean. So we're gonna get together and come up with a definitive plan. One suggestion was, this is nothing that's set in stone, so please don't hold me to it, is that we just have all of the, the uh, public works vehicles 
in one ward on one particular day have the sanitation street sweeper or garbage truck have them all in one ward on one particular day so to me it seems like it'd be a little congested but it may work nothing fails but a try that's just something we're going to be discussing so uh that ends my my report for our public works meeting all right um did the budget meet or did we get the numbers in? The police commission request was already a budgeted okay. item in the 2018, okay. so there was no reason to take it back for them. The council had already approved it. Okay, I have a reminder of fire commission meeting is, I think I got a text. Fire commission, did you say fire? Yeah, you are. Fire commission, you all sent a test out that you all was no, meeting. No, fire commission, uh, fire commission, I was going to do that at the announcements. We are planning to meet. Uh, next Tuesday, June 23rd at 12 okay. noon in the council chambers. Okay. We've already connected with Chief Rose and with the uh, commissioners, and we are planning to meet next Tuesday at okay. noon, June 23rd. Next okay. Tuesday. June 23rd. Thank you. Uh, the uh, the chamber and the airport commission, we both we both met. We all met. So um, under the chair, the chamber report. Um, of course, during the pandemic, everything's kind of slow for the chamber. So we met by Zoom on June the 15th. Um, there's a couple of uh, fundraisers going on. One of them is a 50-50 raffle where you buy a ticket and depending on how many tickets are sold and your ticket is pulled, then you will win more money the more tickets are sold. So uh, that's going on. You can stop by the chamber and pick a ticket up. I think they're 10 bucks or three for 25 and uh the only other thing that's going on basically is uh we're starting to gear up for the fall leadership program and uh the community events uh but that's it on the chamber report on the airport commission was held this morning at eight o'clock um the it was basically to let the uh, commission know that the arkansas department of aeronautics uh will allow uh, an additional time for the grants that are uh, going out and to complete the hangar number three rehab as long as progress has been going on down there so we're gonna they're gonna rehab number three hangar and they're waiting on some money now for the grant um business has been slow they had had a lot of uh, a lot of traffic in and out of the airport um, because of this pandemic so that's the that completes the uh Chamber and the Airport Commission. All right. I don't think there was no other. I've got the West Memphis Utility. Utility, okay. Utility, utility Commission meeting. The Utility Commission it met on June 11th, 2020. The West Memphis Utility Commission met in regular session on this date at 8.30 p.m. Safety Director Brett Sims reported that there was 86 days since last recordable injury, 235 days since last lost time injury, no recordable injury for the month of May. General Manager Todd Peterson presented the personnel update. He stated that there were no new hires and one involuntary resignation for the month of May. The utility currently has 12 open positions. The fourth item on the agenda was April financial update. This was presented by the General Manager once again, Todd, Mr. Todd Peterson. He presented the negative cash flow through April 2020. A lot of people, I'm sure, hadn't been working, and that stands, stands to reason. The fifth item was the net metering rules. This was presented by General Manager Todd Peterson. Motion passed unanimously to forward to City Council for approval. I'd like to make one statement that I think should be told. Todd's doing an excellent job, but this is one fine, well-oiled machine, the way these guys run this operation. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Was there any other committees I may overlook? All right. Uh, uh, hey. Go ahead, Councilman. Well, AMP did meet, of course, yeah. Lee, but uh, one of the things that they're talking about, we discussed really was just opening it up, but they're still going to wait, putting everything on for a minute before they open up. So that was the biggest thing. And then, uh, of course, with COVID, I think you know, the, the funds is up somewhat. They're not hurting bad, so we're doing pretty good for that. Yes, it's right. Monday. He was, he was not there yesterday. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, any other committees that may I met? Hearing none on the move to appointments, I don't have any. Uh, do you have any appointments? Or I, I do want to ask for a motion in a second to declare a vacancy for the city treasurer's position. 
So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed? I, I, did, I didn't hear the motion. I mean, the, I didn't the hear the- uh, Well, I was asking the council to uh, declare a vacancy for the city treasurer, okay. Frank Marno. Aye. So. All right, thank you. It's been approved. So you all have declared a vacancy. Was there any other discussion about appointments or? Yes, uh, on the clerk's, clerk's position. Uh, did we talk, did, did, uh, after the young lady didn't want the job, and uh, so, you know, it's, it's, we got a few months before election, before you had to sign up to get ready for election. So Patricia is here now. She's been doing the job all the time. I feel like letting her complete this out and then people that want to run for clerk, let them run for clerk at the uh, time when we, you know, when we get ready to run, let whoever want to run for it, run for it. But let her finish out this term. We don't have but a few more months before it's time to run. So I want to make a motion that for Patricia Lane be in a, in a clerk until upcoming election. Second. Can I get a second? Second. I got a second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, yeah, I'd like to make uh, one one thing. We just we decided at our last at our last uh, council meeting that we would fill the position, uh, and we did with the uh, the young lady who just sent in a a regret letter saying that she couldn't uh, continue. Uh, but I think we ought to go outside and just fill the position. And uh, that's what we agreed upon doing. And that's what I'm gonna stay with. Well, right now motion and second has been placed on the floor. So what we'll do, we'll read that motion out. And uh, if it fails, we'll come back to it. If there is another- well, let, let, let me say this, let me say this, of course, uh, Mr. Mundy, you yep. got the you got the uh, recommendation and everything for the Mr. League in your hand because I gave it to you this morning. It said that, and it's, it goes back to the discussion that we had the last council meeting, Mr. City Attorney. Uh, it says that we can do that, but it must be done by ordinance. No employee or no elected official. I, we I, can I, do it by ordinance. I see now, the again. It well, says they do not recommend that we do this. It is nothing wrong with you know with Miss Lane being the clerk, but she can't hold the clerk's position and and the employee position at the same time. Well, that's that's not the way the statute reads that I've seen. It's okay. not specific okay. as to who can be appointed. Uh, it just says that the council can, by motion and majority vote, appoint someone to fill out. Uh, this year until the general election when somebody else is elected now okay. uh that the, i don't know what else you're talking about about sh anything well, that she can't do it there's no there's no let, let me finish if i don't if i if you don't mind uh but i have read the statute today and you know i'm not sure i've talked to lanny richmond as well who we have taken a lot of advice from and 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 i know that that uh, you've probably talked to him in the past as well. I know everybody's met him because he came here in December. Lanny told me, and I'll repeat this, I've said this before uh, on the council floor and I'm gonna say it again. He told me specifically, and I'll quote what he said, that if we did this by resolution or ordinance appointing uh, someone to, to fill out this year, we would be the only city that does do it that way. Now. Uh, if you've gotten some different information from him than I have, uh, well, I'd be Mr. happy to share it with you. But they said they recommend that we do not do that. And, and, and all the other council members, y'all seen it, so you got it. So, I mean, it's not like you don't have it in your hand. Well, so everybody have already seen it. I mean, now, again, I'm for all doing it, but then again, like I say, towards the elected position and the employee at the same time, I'm totally against that. And I don't think we should do that. We've done it in the past, and it was done. It wasn't done in proper order, and it caused nothing but confusion. And that's what that's what it would cause. I would like to reiterate that I brought this up when we were talking about old business, and I was told to wait till the end of the meeting. And so I think that my request should be 
have priority over uh, Councilman Mundy's request. Councilman Croom, you brought that up during pre-council, which we know pre-council is not a legal meeting. Uh, we got down to appointments and I was making it clear. I said I didn't have no appointments, so I gave everyone an opportunity. So it is a motion to second on the floor and I'm gonna call for the vote. Ms. City Clerk, will you call the vote? Councilor Cat? Yes. Councilor Croom? Um, abstain. Councilor Harris? Councilor Harris? Councilor Holt? Yes. Councilor Hutchinson? Yes. Councilor Muhammad? Abstain. Councilor Monday? Yes. Councilor Murray? Yes. Councilor Pulliam? Councilor Pulliam? No. Councilor Wheelis? Abstain. All right, we got five. I got six. I wrote down six. We count it again. Pass it. Uh, the motion passes. Any other questions on anything else dealing with appointments? All right, I'm going to move to presentations. Uh, basically, I just want to say uh, happy Father's Day to all the, the good fathers and yeah, all the council men that's on council and working for the city. Uh, around the city of West Memphis, that all men who has been an inspiration or even not biologically the father, but who have stepped up and took on that role. I just want to wish them a, a very happy Father's Day here in, from the city of West Memphis. Uh, any announcements? Uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. I Mayor, uh, I would, uh, would like to uh, donate $500 to a Wonder City Boys and Girls Club and L.R. Jackson Boys and Girls Club, 500 each. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do uh, you have an announcement, Ms. Claire? Yes. I just wanted to remind everybody that it is a requirement when you have more than one council member in a meeting that you have to have an audio of your meeting, anybody. So all your committees that have not been uh, taping your committee meetings, you're in violation. You have to tape them. That's airport and a couple more of them. They have to be on audio and turned in to the city clerk's office. And you can go ahead and hold them until the end of the year and put them on a flash drive. But we are required to store them in the vault for one year until after our audit. So going forward, we need your audio. Please, thank you. I may ask a question about that. When we have our meetings in here or in pre-council and they're Zoomed and everything else, they're recorded, uh, we don't need to bring you a separate recording. You can just simply contact AMP and they can provide it to you? Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Right, thanks. Oh, I have an announcement. Uh, is that uh, the Governor's COVID Care Steering Committee has set aside $150 million for the COVID-related expenses, uh, monies for the cities and counties in the state, which that is good news because, you know, we, you all allowed us to move the money from community development block grant money to potentially pay for these needs dealing with COVID, where there were light bills or different situations like that. The communications, uh, for instance, like the communications director, you know, our Nick, uh, how to set up Zoom means or anything like that. We reimburse, we can be able to reimburse his salary with that. The state will also reimburse time for him running out as well as for the police department who took their school officers and made them a COVID task force address in the uh, COVID-19 issues that we may have in the city. So. <laughs> Chief, uh, I'm sure you're keeping up with those numbers and time, and it starts for March. Um, also, it's going to buy ones for cleaning police cars, reimbursing that as well as, I uh, hope, hopefully paying for uh, ambulance services as well. But those are some of the things that's going to reimburse. So a lot of this money that we did use 
to uh, pay for the COVID-19 needs that you all granted and then we cares this money, some of this money would be recouped through this money so that would allow us, if this pandemic doesn't get any worse for the rest of the year, we'd better use some of that money to do other things that community development and HUD approves for us with that money. But this $150 million that the state is setting aside will go to help pay for the things for us, emergency services, just different things like that. Also, um, all PPE, personal protective equipment, masks, gloves, hand sanitizers, thermometers, cleaning supplies, and all that is now it's going to be reimbursed through this pile of money. So they're going to help save some of the budget money that we had budget to the side. So that will help us out a great deal. Also, any COVID related expenses can be in reverse, re reimbursed with this $150 million set aside by the governor's uh, COVID Cares Committee. We will have more information next week. A conference call is scheduled for Tuesday, June 23rd at 3 p.m. That's Tuesday, June 23rd, uh, 3 p.m. You are welcome to be here, or we can Zoom in if you all just want to be a part of it. Is it going to be set up here now? Well, we're just going to have the conference call. Well, we normally use the, the phone that we have in the, uh, the, the council uh, chambers. And if you all want to be a part of it, just to hear what's going on, you're welcome to be here. But it is June 23rd at 3 p.m and they will have a completed list of all eligible expenses from that point, so. Will this also address the uh, the utility assistance program? Because people are calling me and I had absolutely nothing to do with that. They're asking when their their bills will be paid and I know nothing about it. Well, I, I can't say on that, Ms. Muhammad. Uh, I know this is mostly for emergency services like police services, our city expenses. Uh, I necessarily can't say on that, but I do know June 23rd at 3 p.m. They are going to give us a completed list of what they're going to fund, but I don't think they're going to pay light bills. But well, what about that? What about that light bill situation? We've had about almost 400 people filling out applications. When would their request be uh, Well, actually, completed? what what we're going to do on that, we are looking into that right now. But I want to, and I made this clear when I made the announcements, you have to have been personally affected by COVID-19. This is not right, a program right, that right. costs you blind on your light bill. We're just going to pay it. So uh, we have the money, and soon as we can weed through them and get through everything, and the one that does qualify, we will make that payment because that money has also been deposited within the uh, planning's uh, bank account, the uh, community development money. So we won't have to buy, uh, use any of the general fund money as well. So I can just tell the people that it's being taken care Ooh. of, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Or call you all, call City yes, Hall? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Also, we had meetings where we actually tried to bring all those individuals in, and many of them did come, and some of them qualified, and some didn't qualify. Right, yeah, I know. So. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Any other announcements? Uh, uh, Patricia. <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Girl. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. These, these recordings of our um, committee meetings, who, who needs to furnish the recorder? You can come by and pick up uh, the mayor bought three recorders. You can come by and pick one up prior to your meeting and just return it. And we have the ability to load it right onto our computers and put them on flash drives. So we do have recorders that you can sign out in the city clerk's okay. office. Okay. Yes. All righty. Also, uh, the Arkansas Municipal League has been canceled this year. So it's not going to be a Municipal League meeting. So hopefully, I know you all are budget conscious. So <laughs> we're going to save a little money with the Municipal League because right now uh, it is council at this time. Did we lose in the battle on, on, on the Zoom? Oh, uh, Ms. Harris. Oh, uh, okay. I did want to, yeah. Okay, you want to kill him? Yeah, I did want to make just, uh, I'm sorry, uh, say happy Father's Day as well to all the fathers. I was kind of blank when the mayor was speaking, but um, certainly to all of the fathers, those on council, those in the city, um, we we love, love you, we admire you as women, and we want to uh, 
celebrate you on this Sunday. To my dad that just called me, dad, I'm going to bring you your jack because I know that's what you called me for and I know you're watching. I love you and happy Father's Day. And um, that's pretty much all I wanted to say to all the fathers. All right. Any other announcements? I did have one citizen request. I don't see him, but, oh. Yeah. I thought we was at the end. I want to say Okay, go ahead. I thought we was at the end of the uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, Mr. Murray's request for the $1,000. Thank you. Second. Okay. Motion and second. Can I get all the favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, that's approved. I'm sorry, Mr. Murray. I'm sorry. Uh, we have a Benny Boyce that signed up. It's easier. Yes, okay, come forward. Okay. Get to the, what we normally do is we normally get five minutes and um, you get state your name and your address and address the council. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't recognize you. Go ahead. Okay, can I come here? Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, my name is Benny Boyce. I live on uh, 706 South 15th Street. And I'm here to discuss with uh, council today about a proposal for flood control. Uh, I invented a product uh, in a device will uh, evaporate the water. Now I understand here in town uh, you invest a lot of money on pumps. We pump them from water from one place to another, but that doesn't really solve the flooding problem. Now, not only here in West Memphis, around the country, it floods certain times of the year. It just different storms we have from hurricanes, uh, tornadoes, and floods. Flood being the worst one of them all, okay? Now, in the last two, three years, the United States has spent about $150 billion on flood, okay? Now, my proposal is this. I've already submitted my idea to the United States government. They haven't got back with me yet, but it's different states along the Mississippi that it floods all of the time. Matter of fact, I think last year, Little Rock, downtown Little Rock was underwater, okay? So we have to do something to be a little bit more proactive in our approach for floods. So a mere three days in any city, pretty much any city in the United States, your city is flooded. A tor uh, torrential rain for three days, your city is flooded. And for us to be proactive and to get on something like this before something really major happened is very important for us to act on this right now. Now, what I'm proposing is I did a small uh, prototype of my invention. I would be glad to show it and show my ideas with the council if you allow me. And we can get something started to prevent uh, a large, large uh, catastrophe. Something could be prevented if we put something in place, but you have to act now. We cannot go back to doing something now you know something exists and you have a problem, you have a solution for it, we have to act on it. We can't sit on it and say, okay, we'll think about it. Floods happen here year round. Like I said, all the United States, it always floods. Every major city that floods, you have a levy. You keep the levy down, no floods in your city. Simple way my device works is this. Imagine if you had a bottle of water, a hot skillet. You can pour the water into the skillet and the water just splash a little bit. It wouldn't, very little, it would evaporate. Take the same bottle, put a nozzle on a spray. You spray that skillet, that water would never fill up the skillet. The minute the water touches the skillet, it evaporates. My machine turns to steam, into uh, electricity by turning a turbine for a steam power generator to go back into this machine. We don't dissipate the, the, the uh, vapor into the atmosphere. It powers the machine. Machine burns it off and then that little bit it dissipates into the atmosphere. The main goal is, is to get rid of the water. That's what it does. Thank you for your time. Now tell me something, uh, Mr. Mr. Benny. Is sure. this a machine or a device that you have? Has, has it been patented? Sure, I patented. Uh, yes. Else? Uh, I'm sorry. What's the last question? Has it been? Has your device been patented and used 
any place else or would our city be the first experiment with yes. it? Yes, good question. Uh, I have patented this device. Uh, I've talked with the mayor, so I hadn't patented it at that moment, but for something like this, it needs to have been patented, so I filed for the patent. And also, uh, West Memphis, I'm from West Memphis. Even though this is a problem for something right. of national ramifications, it can start right here and can build it here for the rest of the, uh, the world to see it. And like I said, it can start right here. I've submitted this also to uh, Tennessee and in contact with people over there also. So like I said, this is not something just only for West Memphis. This is something for the whole nation because like I said, last week, if you uh, looking at the news, where uh, North Carolina or Texas somewhere, it's flooding. This is the time of the year we have rains and floods come in all the time. Like I said, flooding is the worst of all. You have tornadoes, tornadoes and hurricanes. They go by quickly. Water sits for days. You cannot do repairs. You cannot save people. You cannot do anything in the flood water until the water recedes. My device get rid of the water and use it for energy and that's going green all the way. So, again, uh, my proposal to the city, if we can get this together and put, put, put something together to uh, have a prototype where you can see. It can be scaled up from any size you want it. You can have it in your backyard or something mainly in levees for flood control. I see your pumps pump water from one place to another. Again, good, but that, that's solving. You flood in one place, to another, and that's not getting rid of the water. So my purpose is, again, to get rid of the water. Mr. Boyce. Thank you. Uh, let me ask you a quick question. Uh -huh. when could you come give the council a demonstration of the, the invention? Um, I can give you a demonstration as soon as uh, probably a day or two. Yeah, I already got a prototype ready. Okay. Council. And uh, I would like to show it to you how it works. May give us an opportunity on Tuesday. Yeah. On what day? Tuesday. Tuesday. May give yeah. us an opportunity on Tuesday. Exactly. Well, absolutely. That'd be great. Tuesday. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I would get. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said. Um, Four o'clock good for everyone? Mm -hmm. Four o'clock. Four, Four o'clock. Tuesday. You come great. Show us. Come by here. See the hall. See the council to be here. We're great. Looking forward. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I want to announce that. Uh, the council members that are here, you all have your financial package right here, but the ones that are on Zoom, your financial package will be here at City Hall. Just pick them up. They're ready for you right now. So, Councilman Pulliam, Councilman uh, Kroon, Ms. Muhammad, and Ms. Harris, uh, they're here at City Hall. You can pick those up at any time. All right. I have nothing else. Anything else? I get a second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, we adjourn. <laughs>